This is Monday, July 12, 2021, 7 p.m. The Cairo Finance Committee will come to order. May we please rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Be seated. I want to thank Area 58, as always, for the fabulous job they do. Thank you, Fran and Fran. Any public comment? Seeing none. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Just I would like to give some acknowledgement to Fran and Fran. They will be leaving us very soon oh. and moving up to upstate New York, if, if I understand correctly, to be with their children. So we are losing two great uh, people that have done a lot of uh, filming over how many, how many years have you been? Uh, About 20 this years. This is open, Sean. You can sit in. Working with the uh, with the Area 58 and the previous incarnation of Carver Community Access Television. So I just like to publicly thank them for all their service. Now I just talked to you on the way up. You never said anything to me, and here I went and, and, and said I sent an email and requested you guys. Now what are we going to do? Can you get back here a couple times a month from New York? It's not that bad a ride. It's an eight-hour drive. <laughs> well, if you leave early. <laughs> they don't pay well enough. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, when, when, is this, when is this happening? Uh, as soon as we can sell the house. Right now, we've got some uh, <laughs> inquisitive people. Well, well, I wish you the best of luck. Thank you very much, because i got to echo what Ron said. You, you've done a fabulous job for us. And I did. I sent an email requesting Fran and Fran um, record our meetings. And I think that you've only missed maybe two out of all the ones we've done. So good job. Best of luck going forward. What there is to like in New York is beyond me, but best of luck going forward. Is it at least upstate? It's uh, near Rochester. Well, that's okay. <laughs> still a little country up there. They're having their troubles still. Yeah, everywhere. <laughs> All right. We have a grant application. I wanted to take it up first so that I wouldn't put this fine gentleman through the fight that's coming with the um, budget transfers. Um, South Shore Community Action, Mr. Cochillo? Cochillo. Cochillo. Floor is yours, sir. Okay, thank you. Is this a good place for me to present from? Or do you, need to you can sit there if you would, just so that the folks at home can hear you in the uh, in the mic. Happy to do that. Doesn't exactly get an Academy Award, but we're working on that. Okay. Well, I happen to be the CEO at South Shore Community Action Council. I want to take just about five minutes of your time to give you a little bit of information about us. So. Um, we were established back in 1965 when President Johnson declared war on poverty. And uh, so we've been around since then. We're one of 23 community action agencies in the state. There are about a thousand of the community action agencies in the United States. Our particular mission is to eliminate poverty on the South Shore. Um, and so our territory goes basically from Powell all the way down Route 3 corridor to the bridge, Sagamore Bridge, and then we also have some programs that are on the Cape and the Islands. Our main office is on Aubrey Street in Plymouth. Um, kind of interesting, we have a, a one of our, actually it's our largest childcare center, is right on South Meadow Road by the airport, so a number of children from Carver, I'm sure, attend there. Um, so many of our programs, uh, we have many programs, and 94% of the budget that we have, which is last year we spent about $21 million, and we only have about a 6 to 7% admin rate, which is very low for a nonprofit organization. That means that 94, 93% of every dollar that we use goes directly to programs that we have. And so I want to tell you about some of the programs that we have, but I also want to mention to you that last year we helped 27,000 people all together and we spent about $21 million. Our budget was about $21 million. Uh, but let me give you some statistics about Carver and how we were able to help some of the individuals in Carver. Overall, we spent uh, $500,000 program dollars in Carver for residents. We helped approximately 850 different residents 
and 562 households. One of the programs that we have is called LIHEAP. We have acronyms for all of our programs. It actually stands for Low Income Heat Assistance. And it's a fuel assistance program. We help 352 households in Carver. Um, we'll use oil or we'll pay for oil, gas, propane, uh, even wood. We always pay directly to the contractors. We don't pay, pay to individuals. We have some weatherization programs or any energy conservation programs as well, uh, which includes if you become eligible for the LIHEAP program, you also could be eligible that we would weatherize your home for the next season. And we help with uh, utility bills. We have a program that's called Burner Repairs and Replacements. Uh, we've done a number of those this past year in Carver. Some of those jobs will spend as much on a replacement, sometimes seven to $10,000 to help a, a family have a completely brand new uh, burner replacement. We have a food resource program on Obery Street, which does a tremendous amount of work, uh, most of it by volunteers, by the way. We have 90 different partners on the South Shore. We actually give food to a lot of pantries on the South Shore and they'll go to councils on aging, uh, to churches and pantries, as I mentioned. Last year, we did approximately 575,000 pounds out of our food resource program. And uh, that's a lot of poundage. That's a 35% increase over the prior year. We found, and you've probably heard this too, people were having significant issues because of the pandemic. With fuel, with fuel assistance, but also with food. Uh, one of the things that you don't necessarily realize, when the child care, when the kids couldn't go to school anymore, they're home. When they go to school, they usually have snacks and lunch in school, and a snack in the afternoon. Now they're home, they're gonna eat you out of house and home. So that put an even higher need for food in people's homes. One of the things that happened is when our child care centers had to close, we were able to, some of the teachers, a lot of the teachers, took bags of food to the families that we were servicing every single week so that they'd have enough food to take care of the kids. Um, so we did almost the equivalent of 4,000 meals in Carver. We also have a program called the VITA program, Volunteer Income Tax Assistance Program. We do free tax preparation for uh, residents, and in Carver we did about 40 different residents. They received a total of about $53,000 in refunds from the tax returns that we did. Uh, we also have a program for rents, for assisting people with their rents and their mortgages. And um, you know the way people have had the eviction notices put on hold? Eventually that's going to be taken off. People are still going to be responsible for the arrearages that they have for rents and mortgages. We have programs, we have additional money that the federal government has given to us where we can help people pay for a number of months of rent or their mortgages to help them get caught up. So if you know somebody that's in need of assistance because they've fallen behind, please, I'm gonna give you our telephone number, I'll give you our web page as well. Uh, I'd love for you to spread the word. If you know of somebody that's in need for that, we've got um, a lot of money to be able to help people. We also had somebody give us donations uh, to specifically help veterans. So if you know anybody that's a veteran that's in need or a veteran family, uh, we'd be happy to help them out as well. We have child care sites. We do over 500 children. Our largest site is in Plymouth down the street that I mentioned to you on South Meadow. And uh, we also have sites in Marshfield, Wareham, and the Cape. We do Head Start, Early Head Start, and the uh, State Early Education and Care. You know, the Commissioner of Child Care in the state called us about two years ago. I don't know if you remember or if you've heard about it, but on the Cape, uh, CCCD, uh, Cape Cod Community Development, was a child care program that did a lot of the Cape sites for children. And they were going out of business, and they let the families know on Tuesday that they were going to be closing their doors on Friday. The Commissioner of the state called us up and said, Jack, can you folks help us out? with childcare on the Cape. We need somebody to go in there right away and see if you can help out. So as a result, we did do that, and we now have 
sites in Hyannis, Falmouth, Yarmouth, and Dennisport. We also have a backpack program where the uh, volunteers will put nutritious food, enough for kids to have, little kids going to grammar school, that they would take that food home on the weekend and they would uh, have enough for themselves, they'd, some of the things that they'd be able to prepare for themselves. Then they'd bring the backpack back to school on Monday, and on Thursday we'd fill those backpacks up again and give them to them on Friday. They'd bring them home. I could go on, but I'm going to just leave it right at that. But I guess the, the key issue here from my perspective is we want to get the word out to as many people as possible that we have funds. We're here to help people. We don't like to turn people away at all. Um, if we don't have money in this fund that we normally would pay out to help you, we'll find a different fund to help you. So we really want you to spread the word that we're here to help and see if we can uh, get people that are in, in need to call us. So our telephone number is 508 747 7575 and again it's 508 747 7575 and our email is sscac.org sscac.org please spread the word as much as you can let people know that we're here to help we're more than happy to do that and uh, we'll find a way to help you out if there's any way possible so I'd be happy to answer any questions if you happen to have any questions. Thank you very much. Anybody? No? no. Well, I'll be the guy, I guess. Um, go ahead. So I can't remember. Did you guys apply last year? They did not. They did not. This is for the application for 2000, our 2022 Right. Budget. This okay. is the current fiscal year. Yeah, because of the pandemic, everything was put on hold. I have to say, Carver has been one of the best towns as far as being there for us every year. Uh, Bernadette Hemingway was on our board. I'm sure it's, mm -hmm. some of you know her. Uh, she was on our board for a number of years. She was very active in Carver. And uh, we've been able to receive funds from Carver for a number of years. You've helped us out tremendously. And we very much appreciate it. Um, so thank you. Thank you for asking. Yeah, no, you, you sounds like you have a wonderful program. It does, and as you know, um, the, the there's a percentage of the of the money that has to go to Carver residents. Obviously, mm -hmm. that percentage is far exceeded. Sure. Um, your reputation precedes you. I don't think there's anybody in this room or anybody watching this on YouTube later on that hasn't heard of Social Community Action and all they've done. Um, I know that they've been. A long, long time ago, I was in the oil business, and, and we dealt with social community sure. action, Quincy Community Action, self-help in Brockton. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I have to tell you, even 25 years ago, social community action was the easiest of the three hmm. as far as reaching someone and dealing with someone and getting problems solved. And, and they really do. They put the client first. At least they did 25 years ago. I'm assuming it's no different today, yeah. if, not, uh, if not more so. So I thank you for the hard work you do. Um, if anyone, if no one else has any questions, I'll be happy to entertain a motion. So wait, are you looking for the full 5,000? Yes. Again, for this year? Yes. That would be great. Um, I make the motion for South Shore Community, Community Action to receive the $5,000 from the grant program from the Town of Carver. For the fiscal year 2022. For fiscal year 2022. Second. Second. Motion is made and seconded to approve the $5,000 grant uh, to South Shore Community Action for the fiscal year 22. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 It is unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you very much very for very coming in. Wish you the very best of luck. And I'd like to sit back and tell you that I hope you don't need any of that money, but I know it's not going to be the case. Just keep spreading the word. We're there to help. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great evening. You too. Thank you.
I give this to you. Can you get this? Oh, I can give it to Craig, I suppose. Um, yeah, I'll give it to Craig. It's all signed off. Thank you. Everybody has a copy they can keep in their file. Administrative Finance Director Updates, Mr. LaFond. I have two quick things for you. Quick. One okay. One quick thing for you. No, one, uh, two things. Number one, we do, this morning the board met in executive session of select board and we do have parameters, contract parameters. We think we have an agreement with a candidate for um, finance director. Um, just a quick review, going back in April, um, Meg gave us her notice we advertised for the position. Um, we got an applicant pool of about 21 people, I believe. Um, municipal experience was very thin. We went out and we actually advertised one more time. We had, I think, about five other candidates. Um, we took a look at those, weeded those out. The chair, uh, and Beth is the chair of Capital Outlay, uh, <clears throat> met with us. We interviewed three people, and there was a recommendation uh, for one particular candidate. Uh, she's accepted the job you know, uh, contingent upon a contract being negotiated. And as of this morning, it looks like we're pretty much there. So hopefully um, we'll be looking at something in the period, maybe mid-September mid when somebody could be on board here. In, in the, the meantime, meantime? In the meantime, we continue to have uh, uh, Mr. Adams, John Adams, who is a finance director in Duxbury, and uh, his assistant over there who's also helping out on her own. He and her on her own as contractors, not as we initially thought we were going to do a uh, inter-municipal agreement with the town of Duxbury, but that turned out to be a little too complicated. So they're serving in the capacity as, of uh, consultants. Um, fortunately, these days you can do a lot of work remotely, so mm -hmm. they don't have to be in here that often. So, um, so he'll be happy to hear there's an end in sight. Uh, but John, John, most some of you remember John. Oh yeah. Well, actually, I'm looking at the yeah. wrong side over here. People remember John Adams, who was the town accountant here for about eight years. Uh, back in 2003 to 2000 and I don't do the math 11 12 11, sorry it's a finance committee you should be able to do some math here um, so as it stands we have a, we're in pretty good shape in the interim um, we do again hopefully we're looking at a mid-september start date and I will have to say Craig you've really done a great job I mean he's obviously his accounting isn't his thing he's assessing and uh, he spent some time he understands the Treasury function but um, just in terms of picking up some pieces and doing homework uh, you know he's been extremely extremely valuable so thank you Craig um, the second thing I want to add is that um, and I don't want to steal anybody's thunder but was it two weeks ago Bill Sean um, Sarah Hewins and I met uh, Mr. Bellman couldn't make it we met right here to start discussing this uh, an update to the existing finance committee bylaw um, I think it was it was interesting I think we went through uh, you know compared it to the capital outlay bylaw uh, past and present uh, discussed some of the history and why the language probably read what it read um, talked about options and I think the more we untangled it the more difficult it got so uh, so I think we've done the untangling. Now we can try to try to put it back together. So it was it was rather rather interesting, uh, I think, for all of us. So we are meeting again this Friday. I believe we're scheduled this Friday morning. So I don't know how long it's going to take. <clears throat> um, obviously, it would be nice to have something ready for a uh, fall town meeting, but uh, I think it's important to make sure we get it right. Um, so I don't know. If, I don't want Sean or Bill if you want to add anything. But that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Yep, I mean, um, just to reiterate what Rich said, it was trying to untangle everything that was written so long ago and interpreting you know, what was meant by it, what, you know, how does it apply today, and we all came to the realization that we have to strip it down to its bare bones and try and build back up to make sense of it without putting ourselves in the situation 10 years down the line where someone else will come and look at it and say, well, what, is, what was meant by this by law? So we're trying to make it as black and white as possible. Matt? Good. No, I don't, I don't have anything to add to that. I know I do know we did set a, a goal to have uh, have it done. I think by September. Yeah, we were, would have something drafted and it's, rather yeah. You know, more of a guideline just to give it's us something reasonable. For, but yeah. I, you know, like Rick said, it's the more we talked about it, the more 
complicated. <laughs> right. So again, try, trying to ultimately define the intent and try to put language around an intent that isn't so, you know, that doesn't uh, doesn't become so something that can be interpreted so many different ways. It, it really it's going to be tricky, but we're uh, I think we got halfway through. I think we pulled it apart at least. Well, unfortunately. Um Bylaws all start from an oops, and, and this is where they all come from. So when a bylaw is crafted, it's usually crafted because of the screaming baby at the moment. Uh, and sometimes they overreach, sometimes they underreach, sometimes they're vague, and to try to go back and find the authors and actually get down to the intent, unless you can find notes and there aren't any. So you try to do the best you can. Recollection, we rely on the people who were around for a while and they were here when a lot of this stuff happened. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad you, you, you gentlemen are doing this. Um, I think it's something that absolutely needs to be addressed. Everybody knows where I sat at, at, uh, at town meeting. Uh, and hats off to Wicked Local and Catherine. Uh, she sent me an email and asked for my thoughts on it, and I told her who was on the committee, and I said I'm not, I'm not, I'm going to reserve any opinion I have until I see what comes back out. So everybody is pulling in the same direction for this, and nobody's trying to undermine anything. I just think it needs to be clear we shouldn't need four Philadelphia lawyers to interpret a bylaw in town. <laughs> and, and just as a, an aside, I think uh, you know, Catherine Gallerini was here. Uh, subcommittees of boards uh, you know there was a time when years ago none of us really thought about this much but if you're serving as a authorized subcommittee of a board you're also subject to the open meeting law uh, so to the extent that it used to be well let's have a subcommittee uh, really to avoid a quorum in good faith to avoid a quorum that's that's really not the way it works you have to post a meeting if right. you're a authorized subcommittee of a, of a body so that's all I have mr. chairman thank you both of you, thank you. A lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, it'll get worse before it gets better, don't worry. <laughs> Year end budget transfers. Mr. Schof, Schof, Schaef. Schof. I got it right the first. Got it right. So, hi, Craig. Hi. Isn't that much easier? Yes. Yeah, Mr. Easy, you. <laughs> so, I had to go through. Uh, because we are short staff in the accounting department, the last uh, AP. Excuse uh, me, do you have anything for us to look at? Yes, I was going to get this out. Um, okay, why don't you give it to me and I'll pass it out while you talk. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the last uh, AP uh, warrant uh, for FY21 had not been posted, so I had to spend the day uh, calculating. Uh, the, all the year-end balances by hand and going through them uh, it looked like only one department needs a, a year-end uh, reserve fund transfer and that would be the uh, Council on Aging uh, for roughly uh, 21,000 it's on the, uh, so the sheet what you want me to sign and turn back in if we should so approve this correct so this is not for us to keep no that copy is not for you to keep but the, the what was attached to it can go to everyone Yes. Is that only one of these? One page? Yeah, one page. It is. So these are duplicates? Yeah, they're all duplicates of the COA. I got you. Thank you. Yep, so it would be uh, roughly $21,000 that would need to be transferred from the reserve fund to the uh, uh, line item. Uh, it's because uh, it was anticipated that uh, there was going to be no changes to the COA. Uh, but uh, at the start of the fiscal year, uh, an employee who was uh, split between the COA and the library uh, became the uh, COA department head. So their entire salary uh, uh, came straight from the COA, not split between the COA and the library. So, uh, so are they over in just one line item, just salaries, or is it several line items within? No, ju just just that one uh, line item. Um, I. The, the bottom half of that page just shows it, uh, but where uh, the department head line item is negative uh, $30,385.87, mm -hmm. figured just put it towards that because that was the, the reason for the overage. Um, but we have to combine the 
the salaries and expenditure. Uh, so that's why uh, that's why it shows uh, the twenty one thousand and change number um, on the form to be signed. Okay, so it's the negative twenty three seven zero three plus the two thousand. I'm sorry, two thousand three hundred twenty eight dollars. Correct. Yeah, because uh, because it's approved at town meeting, uh, just gen the budget's approved. General government, public safety, education. Uh, we we don't. The Department of Revenue says we just have to look at it. However, town meeting approves it, but we take it a step further and we just look at the the department total in general. Uh, other communities will go line by line and say, for example, assessor's salary assessor's expenditure and people can yell hold but uh, we don't do it that way so we look at the whole uh, department um, not uh, salaries or expenditures as two separate uh, so uh, going through the the entire uh, budget that looks like uh, the only uh, the only account that needs a reserve fund transfer uh, the police department is over um, both salaries and expenditures, or excuse, excuse me, salary and operating, but we're going to be transferring uh, compensated absences uh, to cover that um, because it was uh, the result of a buyout uh, for one of their officers. And then on you, we have annual town meeting art, but that's also part of the Council of Aging. We can't. Are they going to spend that? Those can't be grouped together? No, uh, because it's a uh, town meeting uh, warrant article, uh, that, that's separate. Uh, that's not part of uh, the feasibility study. Mm. Yeah, so that, that's not part of uh, the numbers when we look at it. We just have to, uh, I was talking with uh, the previous finance director earlier today, but just ignore the uh, uh, town meeting articles when looking at uh, overages for the reserve fund transfers. And uh, once the uh, AP warrant, uh, the FY21-52 warrant's posted, I'll send uh, the, the final uh, uh, expense report to the, uh, the board. Mr. Chair, if I could just point out one other uh, item here. I have a question first, if yes. you don't mind. I'm still fun. Um, so you're telling me that this $23,000 is because we, uh, of the department head increase yeah, the twenty-one thousand. I, I get that. Yep. Um, the previous director of the Council on Aging was the director of the library, and we gave her a stipend of an additional fourteen thousand dollars to the Council on Aging. Where did that fourteen thousand dollars go? That remained in the budget. So Where? Well, and why didn't it come down to this line? If we're going to. Well, I think what's in that line combined with. Well, I guess there's two pieces here. Um, the money, that, those funds should be in the budget there, yes. Um, combined with that, um, there's funding in the library, which can't be transferred over. Uh, because but she was given a stipend specifically because she was the director of the Council on Aging. Correct. So when she's no longer the director on the Council on Aging, Correct. that Fourteen thousand dollars stipend amount is now floating around someplace. No, no, that's, it, that it, stays in the department. But keep in mind that um, wouldn't that be staying? Wouldn't that have come out of the council on aging budget that, if it was a stipend well, be, for council on aging? Be used to pay the new director. Right? That department head line item uh, was budgeted twelve thousand eight hundred thirty-two dollars. Um, Which is confusing to me because she was getting fourteen thousand dollars in a stipend, and we had. Um, the assistant director already on salary. So I guess I'm a little confused. Yeah, didn't, didn't, I guess we got to use names because I'm confused over titles. So Carol Julius was the director of the Council on Aging yes. and she got a stipend in addition to the funds that she received as being the director of the library. Mm -hmm. Connie Kelly was the event coordinator, or whatever her title was, at a salary, and then she moved up to be director. So there was a salary she was getting versus a salary that she ended up with. That difference, plus the 14000 that we are no longer giving Carol Julius because she's no longer the director, I guess I'm trying to find out how we got to this $23,000 number and where those other two numbers are located. 
I don't know about the fourteen thousand dollars. Yeah, I can only speak conceptually to that. You know, the money that was would have been paid for the director should be in the salary line item of the of the, of the library, and the funds that were paid to um, to Connie as the uh, as the activities coordinator that would have been a separate line item, but that would also be salaries. Um, so when she absorbed the full-time duties, then the, whatever was in her salary line item plus the director's pay um, should have been going to pay for that position. Correct. And to offset that, although it doesn't quite, um, probably doesn't work out to the dollar, the position that Connie held in the library, uh, there was a position over there part-time that wasn't filled. That was the plan the whole time, that, that funding for this position uh, would uh, would essentially be derived from not filling a position in the library. So you've lost me even more now. So now I still don't know where the where, where the stipend went. I think it was twelve thousand. The twelve thousand. A couple of years ago, and then it was bumped up. Yeah, because I'm looking at the the library salaries right now, and there's no line item for fourteen thousand dollars stipend. So there's a twelve. There must be. It must what, be the, what year are you looking at? Twelve eight thirty two. I'm looking at. This, the, all this information is this, the FY21, the end of the year. Is that the, the 12, 832? Libraries total salaries. Libraries total salaries. Uh, there is uh, a department head was uh, $87,839. Clerical salaries, 139547 And librarians, $118,371. Um, How much do they spend? Uh, what they spent was expended uh, 259,974 dollars and one cent there's a uh, balance remaining of 85 almost 86 thousand so they're under budget 86 thousand and the Council of Aging was over budget 23 thousand yeah Thank you. keep keeping in mind that there are, uh, for a period of time there were two Two positions that weren't filled at all, two part time positions, and for a period of time three, um, you also had a period of time where people were furloughed. Oh, that was my next question. They were closed. So I'm confused over all this payroll for a building that was literally locked up for six, eight, nine months. How long? Were they not furloughed? Do we? They were, yes, they were. A number of them were furloughed. So they had to be savings in the payroll. Well, that's why there's eight, yeah. yeah, on the library side, but the COA, they are, because they're, they're two separate departments, they're... Yeah, but I get that, but I'm still looking for the stipend money for I, the COA. I think because it had, uh, I think it was... That didn't come out of the library. That had to be charged back to the COA That's why I think it was a stipend. That's why I think it was not a f 14, I could be wrong, but the, the 12,832 12, seems like that would fit the uh, okay. stipend amount. Then what were we paying Connie Kelly before we made her the director? And where's that salary number? I don't know. That would that was split 50-50 between the COA uh, and the library. Uh, most likely it would be under uh, regular salaries for the Council on Aging. I I apologize. Oh, it would have to be. That's I'm not trying to give you a hard time. No, I'm trying to get I, I'm trying to get my head wrapped around numbers that I know exist. Yeah, and and I'm being told that we're twenty three thousand seven hundred dollars short in door number one, but we're eighty nine thousand dollars over in door number two, and somewhere off in box on the floor is fourteen or twelve thousand dollars in stipend money that we're not really sure about. Yeah, I'd but the problem that I have is that you want to take twenty three thousand dollars out of our reserve account when it appears that there's money floating around that can be moved to do this because it was shut down for how long and there's an over. What are you going to do with that money at the end of the year? Uh, I think, uh, in my experience, we can't just move money from a library budget to a COA budget. I mean, there has to be some sort of legislative authority to do that. Yeah. I don't think so. It's, we year. were told many, many times it was government intergovernmental transfers. But I think those are always subject to town meeting approval. When we go through, we have a whole list normally of transferring from the library to the Council on Aging. That's one of those things, first things we do at town meeting. Well, maybe we ought to wait for town meeting and do it again. Well, the other piece here, which isn't being discussed, and it hasn't really been the history apparently, is that the last two months of the fiscal year, uh, the 
Finance Committee and the Executive Board, well, the committee or board, to transfer money between line items, end of year transfers. So, um, and that doesn't mean just a reserve fund transfer, that means between um, up to a certain percentage of that particular line item. I think it's maybe 15%. So you can move money around at the end of the fiscal year. Well, that was the whole point of the legislative act probably 10 years ago now. But we didn't do that here. Well, that's not something that it seems to be the practice in this town um, because either you haven't needed to or it just hasn't been like your, your choice of, of methods to. Would that percentage have to be of the, the variance, the two difference, or of the beginning budget? No, it would be of, of the, the beginning budget of whatever you're transferring it from. But I can check on that particular threshold. But it's just a way of, of moving money around at the end of the year because you don't always have the finance committee uh, enough in a reserve fund at the end of a fiscal year. And the whole point of that legislation was to keep cities and uh, towns from having to go to a special town meeting to move, you know, 50 bucks around. I, listen, I have no problem. That's the reason for the reserve fund. That's the reason we just pay $28,000 security cameras and the reason why we backed up the fire department's purchase for 70000 That's the reason we have the reserve account. I just want to make sure that all of our, our, our numbers are correct here because it, 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 to me, unless I'm missing something, this doesn't add up. It doesn't make sense to me because it looks like there's something missing to this equation. Can I ask a question? Sure. What is the salary of the new COA director? She's, she's in the mid-50s, I believe. All right, so well, the, the, uh, when I see it, the expended column here, those are, that's basically what she ended up receiving on a pro-rata basis? Yeah, because I don't think she started right at the beginning of uh, FY21. I think it was, I, it has to be, if she's making in the mid-50s, it would have to be a later start date. And then the six thousand dollars left over under the regular salaries is probably her staff. Her, her, her. Well, it's also the salary. That, I mean, that appears to be left over six sixty six hundred left over, which is probably when she was no longer collecting her salary as a program director. Then that money ends up getting left over there. So, I mean, to me, it looks like you had the initial. Um, Department head getting 12, 832. I don't know anything about the 14. That must be the stipend, and the 12, 832 must be the stipend? You, most likely. I can look into it, but that, that's most likely the stipend. There's only, one, there's only one department head, so at the time, so what happened? So the, the shortfall is because we started paying the new COA director at a $53,000 rate, but it, she did, wasn't there for the entire year, so it falls short of the total 53000 but that leaves us at the minus 30 because we started out thinking we were only paying the department head 12, uh, 6, 8, 12, 8, 32. So, I mean, it, it seems to track in terms of, you know, when you had the, the midterm change. But, you know, the question comes up when you have 86,000 left over in another department, it would sure be nice to have that department take care of this instead of coming out. So, I mean, I think these numbers work. Uh, in explaining why we're at the minus twenty-three thousand, I'm just—I I, just—it seems unfortunate that there's an eighty-six thousand uh, dollar overage in another department that we can't access to pay for this. Well, keeping in mind that those funds are going to close out to end of year and ultimately free cash or something like that. No, no, I understand. No, but I'm well, just I saying mean, as opposed know. to protect the reserve fund for this for this committee, though. Well, the reserve fund is, this is coming out of last year's reserve fund anyway, so. All right, all right. Yeah, this is not, not, this is not touching the 125. No, this, is end of year. Oh, all right. this is end of year, so this is going to take, which, what is our, uh, did you get a balance of our reserve account? Uh, no, because no transfers have been made into the accounting system. I don't have uh, the reserve fund balance. So there was still like $120,000 there because 70 of it was earmarked for the fire station, 28 of it was earmarked for the, for the um, cameras. Apparently those transfers have not taken place yet. No, because the fire I department will not take place because we're going to probably, that's contingent on the CARES Act. Yep. Um, so. Yeah, and we still haven't received the, uh, the third or the sixth uh, submission. Awesome. Uh, yeah. Is there any danger that if we tap, take this out of the last year's reserve fund that we might need? No, because oh, if, if what, what Meg had got a hold of me before um, she left and said we should, re, we should um, rescind 
the fire department transfer request. And I said, well, if you look at the wording in the motion, the motion that was made was to transfer a 70,400, whatever it was, for the Cascade machine contingent upon denial by the CARES Act. Mm -hmm. So when the auditors came in, the auditor had an issue with, because we were coming to year end, the auditor saw it as a double dip until Meg showed her the actual motion. And then I guess the auditor was fine with it because it, it, would, it was one or the other. Mm -hmm. Just the way we had worded the motion, which was very carefully worded for that reason. Because we didn't know when the CARES Act money was going to come in. Um, now the point becomes moot anyway. The money's been approved in last years. If there's enough money to do all of this, it can stay there. If the CARES Act denies it, then it'll come out of that account. If it ran short, they'd come back and get a little bit more out of the current reserve account. I don't have a problem with that. Um, you may very well be right. I just I don't like these kinds of reports because they they leave more questions than they give answers because mm -hmm. they're very vague. Department head, executives, uh, regular salaries of seventy three thousand dollars, and we don't know who we're talking about here. What are these salaries for? Um, I, I like a little more detail. The twelve eight thirty two may very well be the stipend. I don't know that. Um, obviously, Connie was getting a paycheck to be the event coordinator and Carol was getting this as a stipend in addition so now as, as Connie moved up Carol steps down whatever that influx is what Connie was making to what she went to be making and, and all that I'm going to assume the 23703 is correct but I'd like very much payroll was the last payroll was posted so all uh, salary numbers are accurate. Okay, I'd it's like a, I'd like an accurate accounting for this line item and for the regular salaries for the entire year, so we know exactly when the shift was made. Yep. And how much of the stipend was given to the former director, which may be why it's an odd number. Twelve eight thirty two is kind of an odd number to give somebody a stipend. That's why I think it went to 14000 so if some of that was given to her. Um, and, and then at another time, we'll discuss um, the library expenses that are, you know, rather high given the fact it was closed for nine months. But that's not for today's argument, so. Um. Tommy, yeah, it would help if, we, if, we, if there was a, an initial line on it. Yeah, I'd like to budget, see more budget, detail. As opposed yeah. to budget year to date, yeah. so we would know what the starting budget was. And it's, please, we're not, we're not, picking on you by any no. means, so please don't take that the wrong way. Um, I, I just have a question because municipalities don't make strong suit. So can you move budgets from department to department? I thought we couldn't because they were approved at town meeting. Or uh, is it that you can move, say, individual, like a um, one line item to another, but as long as it's within the department? I don't know. I'm not an accountant. This, I apologize. A, uh, it's kind of unique this is. This. I'm not I've not seen this type of uh, setup in mm -hmm. all the years I've been in the business. Well, so. I'll, I'll do a little cohasset math for you. Maybe that'll help you. Well, the bigger numbers than we probably have here in Congress. Yeah. Uh, well, um, back, back in, 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 say, 2010, how would this have been handled? This would have been handled, uh, well, probably would have had to have an end-of-year transfer uh, between departments. Well, we did that last year too. A vote of the FinCom and the Select Board approving right. a transfer as if you were the mini town meeting. Right. That's how you would do an end of year transfer because it, there wasn't just this huge general government, you know, public safety where you can move money around between those. It's just, you know, it's department to department, salaries and expenses. You would move money to a salary item or to an expense item from a salary line item in a, or an expense line item. So, um, and but again, it's not like we're getting into sub line items. No, we're not. But Beth's out. comment is correct. We and cannot I, move it from fire to police. We can't move it from O and M to the Council on Aging. But the way the departments were grouped, finance department is now finance and assessing. So assessing is not its own department anymore. So you could do a line item, and and I want to say that COA library veterans they got all grouped into their own little department too i could be wrong well, it's, yeah, it's that's that didn't that yeah. 
to my knowledge, that uh, uh, restructuring didn't take place. It was the the finance department restructure was, did. Yeah, but uh, it was the uh, uh, li com uh, living community. Yeah, yeah, community living. Yep, that was put on hold. Okay. So they're not all under one umbrella. Okay. <clears throat> Yeah, the, the, the other uh, piece here, too, is under the, you know, uh, municipal charter of accounts, you literally have uh, separate categories. You've got public safety, you have general government, you have human services, right. um, you know, you have, you know, f you know fixed debt. So, so to the extent that you have a number of departments and human services, um, and again, we don't really define what those are. That's really defined by the state. Um, and you try to transfer funds you have a huge salary budget and expense budget for all those uh, on, all underneath the departments within that category, well, then I guess you could move money around. And I think that was what was trying to be established here, but I find it confusing personally. And I think there's probably a simple way to do it. Maybe going forward we can talk about that. Okay. I just like a little more detail on the report so it would generate a lot less questions. Um, People like me tend to like as much flexibility as possible, but and, I, I and so didn't your predecessor. Yeah, well, what I'm getting at is, but there, there is a, a point where um, it, it's too flexible and try to keep track of what has happened financially can get a little bit difficult to track over the years if it's that flexible. So the former chairman of the select board begged me not to put forth a, a bylaw change that would require FinCom intervention between every line item transfer. Well, that, the budget was the budget was the budget. And you didn't move any money around until you came and told us. Well, that's, it's not 1922. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So do we need to make a motion? Well, we do. This from the so can, can we get can we get some detail? Will you follow up with some detail on this? We'll take up the article, but will you follow up with some detail on this? Yep. So I just want to make sure of this right. The amount that you need to transfer is 21374.10. Yep. 374 Yeah, I'm sorry. Here's, this is the, you only had one copy of the request. I didn't get an early copy. No, it's because I was because I had to calculate everything by hand, I had to. Don't worry. I didn't get that done until. Uh, That's all right. It just, just before the meeting. Um, I'm gonna. I would like to make a motion to make a transfer from the finance committee reserve for twenty one thousand three hundred seventy four dollars and ten cents to the council on aging salaries. Second. Motion is made and seconded to transfer twenty one thousand three seventy four ten from the council on aging from the um, reserve account to the Council on Aging department head. It gives actually a number, but that'll work. Um, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anything else? You know, I could just again thank Craig again, obviously. He's, uh, in no offense, but obviously, you know, you can't expect anyone to step in and do this late the year, year end when I want your begging any finance director. I, I'm, and I'm not saying that. Please don't misunderstand. No, 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 I know. I just want to point that out. That, Please. That it's, uh, it's, it puts uh, this committee in a little bit of a disadvantage. I'm going to get a copy of this. He's doing a fabulous I'm job. I'm sure this was yes. hard to count. He really is. I can't eat you. Yeah, I had to. There was about 300 uh, invoice line items. I had to go through. I had to turn this into an Excel doc and go through each individual uh, line item. So, yeah, and, uh, we only have a part-time uh, accountants without the uh, finance director. So, next few months will be challenge. No volunteers? <laughs> no, I didn't. Well, at least we have a finance director incoming. I didn't know that. Yeah, the original. Thanks. You've done a fabulous job. Yes, yes. And, and I've said this right along. I said this from the very t first time I met you. I think you did a great job and you had an awesome teacher. Yes. Meg taught me everything. So she obviously taught you more. <laughs> and that's very, very hard shoes to fill. Yes, I agree. <laughs> 
Is that the only budget transfer? Yep. All right, run us through the police station one more time so they're okay for this year? Yes, they are. Um, I knew about the, the um, obligations um, and that had to do with the deputy chief coming from sergeant to deputy chief coming from really union employee to administration, so. Yep, so that, uh, that uh, contractual obligation, that uh, overdrew the uh, whole police department salaries and uh, uh, operating account uh, to uh, about $19,000 overage, but um, the contractual obligations were larger than that, so we can move compensated absences gotcha. to cover that. So, and I've already talked to the chief, him and I had a meeting this morning, and oh, uh, it, he, he's fine with that. And there's a couple other things that need to be reclassed, so that 19000 uh, won't be the final number coming from compensated absences. It's looking probably closer to about 10,000 oh, when all said and done. But uh, other than that, uh, departments were pretty fine. Uh, again, low, uh, but no one else was uh, really over on uh, both. I said this before too, we're very fortunate that we have the chiefs of these departments and these department heads that take their budgets very seriously. Um, I think it was two years ago that Meg had said that the chief was under his budget by that much, but she had no idea how he pulled it off. She said there's no trans, she, they, she didn't think he could do it. So when it comes right down to it, um, we're very fortunate that we have the administrative people that we have that are watching over the tax dollars the way they watch over them. And they stay right within um, I knew about the shortfall um, because the chief called me and said, you know, I feel terrible. I, I hate doing this. And then he explained the reasons for it. And it was like, well, what do you expect? Yeah. It was, this was not it wasn't planned. planned. Right. So uh, pretty much the same thing when the car got smashed, you know, and we needed to come in with some transfer of funds because it ran into a deer or something, I think, it, whatever it was. Um, so and then the insurance company didn't end up paying enough and so forth. So this is what happens. So if that's all you got, I appreciate it. Thank you very, very much. You're welcome. Um, just if you can shoot me off whenever you get that put together, there's no rush on it, just shoot it off in an email. Okay. All right. Thanks. Um, minutes of the June 21st meeting. I have them printed in front of you. I've sent out to everyone. If there's no corrections, when you're ready, I will be happy to take a motion. Motion to approve the minutes for the June 21st, 2021 meeting. As written. As written. Second. I have a motion made and seconded to approve the minutes for the 2021 meeting as written. Um, all those in favor, you were not here, Mr. Clark, so. I plan on All those in favor? Aye. 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 So we have six, seven. Six, six zero one. What was the uh, expected time for the cameras mid July? Yeah. Um, do you know what they ended up doing with that funding? Did it go? I assume that it went to the recreation account because it could not go in the police for the article. You know what the status of those of that installation job is? Uh, Offhand, I don't. I can find out tomorrow. Bill's on it. Believe me, it's happening. Okay. All right. Yeah, it was supposed to be middle of July, but yeah. it was on back order. Yeah, and he was, he was, that's what he said he was promised, and then he, he even said at the meeting, I'm doubtful. Yeah. So. Uh, also, we had a bill for the Association of Town Finance Committees, which is something that we join every single year. So I approved that and sent that off to Laura um, to be paid, $210. That's just something that gets done every single year. It's like the MMA dues.
Next meeting date. Um, we still have two transfers. Shane give th gives thanks. Would like to come to the next one. I guess they're on vacation, which is why they couldn't make tonight. I was glad and grateful that so sure could could come. But we have Shane gives thanks, and we have health imperatives. Um, so I don't know that there's any urgencies. I'd like to see. This is the 12th of July. So what are, what what is everyone's thoughts for August? I don't think there'll be very much going on that month, but I really hate to put these off until September. Outside of the first week of August, I'm fine. Yeah, I'm going the second week. Okay. So if we moved it to something like the 16th. I couldn't make that one. Okay. How about the 23rd? Good for me. I can do the 23rd. Yep, that's fine. Right, why don't we push that uh, up to August 23rd and then we we'll see if there's anything else that comes in. Um. <coughs> Excellent. Committee member comments. And everybody jump at once. Nobody? It's great to have you with us, Brock. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. I don't know if we announced. I think we announced it last well, that, time, but you weren't here. Yeah, that's what I was going to I was going to welcome him, too. Um, you, will you do the official one? Would you, would you do me a favor tomorrow when you see Elaine and ask her where Ron's nameplate is? And if they, you know, threw it out because they were happy that he was gone, could they order him a new one? I think we burned it. Probably. That's what I'm wondering. I, most likely it's... Let's we'll see if we, can, if we can rise from the ashes. <laughs> Anyone else? Welcome. Thank you. Um, we kid around a lot, but the fact is is that um, 15 years, Selectman? Is that correct? But I started in the FinCon. FinCon. Yeah. So... Um, there's a tremendous resource of history, um, both, and I say this with all due respect, both good and bad. Ron will tell you the good things that were done through those years. He'll tell you the disastrous things that were done through those years. Pat can do it, too, and probably tell you where a lot of the bylaws came from and why they say what they say, which is where I get the attitude of usually bylaws come from an oops because it's something that no one ever thought of having. Why did we have to write this down? And then it's like, oh my God, now we have to write this down. So the, the historical data is extraordinarily important. So welcome. You're very welcome. It's nice to see you here. And uh, that's all I got. Nobody else? Motion. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. He's very fast at doing that. I'm not, so you could make the motion. Mo <laughs> Mo motion made to adjourn. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. We are out.